So, Father, we just thank you right now for your presence. We thank you for your anointing. We're so thankful this morning, my God, that you just come into this house and filled it with your very own, that just filled it with your presence. And, Lord, we just want to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor for that. Lord, take us to that place. Take it, lift us up. Lord, let us fly like the eagles and soar above the circumstances and situations of life. Let our eyes be fixed on you and we'll give you all the praise. We'll give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Tom said, you know, this morning there as he was doing the communion, he said that the cup and the, and the biscuits speak to us. And, and it's so very, very real. It speaks to us. That, because the, the biscuit uh, speaks to us about a saviour who died, who gave his life broken, that we might be made whole. And the blood of the, the, the cup speaks of the blood, of course. That, that the blood cries out today. You know that the blood is still crying out today? It's crying out for you and me, and it's crying out for, for people to rise above the circumstances. And, and so Satan's cunning devices as he comes to, to tr feed lies into our lives. And uh, it's only the truth that will set you free. So we've been sharing on uh, Satan's cunning devices. And uh, I make no excuses. It's a very, very simple message. But uh, I think it's very, very real, very, very true. And so uh, this morning as, we, as we're just sharing again, I want to just bring another aspect of that. And just uh, so I can kick it off again, let's have a look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10, it says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Everybody say strongholds. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God and bringing every thought into captivity, the obedience of Christ. And that's what we're doing today in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to bring everything down and and we want Jesus to rule and reign in our lives, and we want his word to be so powerful and sharp. When Adam fell, it had a catastrophical result. The fall resulted in man being driven from the Garden of Eden, from where God intended him. When God first created man, he placed him in a garden, and it was so beautiful, and, it would, and God used to come down in the, present, in, in the cool of the evening and and I, 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 we, can't, we cannot imagine what the Garden of Eden was like. The beautiful atmosphere and everything like that. But now in uh, Genesis 3 verse 24, we read where man had been driven out of the Garden of Eden. The blessing of God ceased and the curse began. Something that perhaps we may not understand in the natural, but in the realm of the spirit when Adam partook of that fruit, something in the realm of the spirit and, and, and the curse came upon mankind. And, and this is the warfare, this is the battle right from that very beginning, right there. Even though they were God conscious, they didn't have an understanding of the blessing. They were, they were living under the curse. The ground brought up weeds and Anybody ever notice that you do not have to plant a weed? It's part of the curse. And, uh, you know, even though you dig your soil up and everything like that, and I planted a few seeds the other day, and, and, I, and I went out there and I thought, man, they're coming up. But no, they're weeds coming up. <laughs> and they're not coming up, just a few of them, they're coming up by the thousands. I, we had, uh, when... We were living in Brisbane. We had two acres of land out at Albany Creek, and uh, it had uh, beautiful cooch grass all over it, and it was so really nice, beautiful cooch. But Neil decided that he was going to be Farmer Neil. So I hired a tractor to come in and plow it all up. And they plowed it up, and I was going to grow pumpkins, and I was going to grow this, and I was going to do that. You know what I grew? I grew Magurabur. Who knows what a Magura burr is? Farmers know what a Magura burr is. I had two acres of Magura burr. And I don't know where they came from, but I never planted them. But you know what? Interesting thing. I didn't need a pumpkin from that paddock. <laughs> this enemy, the curse. 
You see, what we needed, we needed a saviour, amen? And we needed some of that uh, roundup and a few other things there to get rid of the enemy. I want to just read some scriptures to you. It's found in Romans chapter 5. And uh, they're very, very popular scriptures. And, and I think most of us know many of these scriptures by heart. But it says uh, in uh, Romans chapter 5, verse 12, it says, Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, because all men sinned. This situation that happened there because of one man, that what, what Adam did now has overshadowed all of us. And, we, and sin got into us. The sin nature got into our lives. Sin became part of us. But it also says there in uh, verse 17, it says, For if by one man's offense, that's Adam's offense, death reigned through the one, much more. Everybody say much more. See, that's what we've got to, we've got to understand, the much more. What happened there was catastrophic, okay? Was terrible. Sin entered into the world. Sin entered into, the, into mankind. And mankind had a penalty of death over him because we all sinned. But now it says, for if by one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace. And so this is a, what's got to get inside of us, that what I have now is much more, more powerful, greater than what the enemy put in back at the fall. So I don't have to live under the curse. I don't have to live under that, that, that fallen nature. Much more now, I can rise above it. And if I get that thinking inside of me, if I get that into my brain, that greater is he that's within me, and all those sort of things, and the word of God will not return to him void, and all that, the word of God is powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. If I can start to build myself like that, then I'll build a man of power, then I'll build a person of strength, that when the enemy comes, I won't fall to his temptation, I won't listen to his lies, I'll rise up and say, that is not true, because much more, much more, those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Reigning in life is what Jesus wants. I think that the church has played second fiddle to a poodle puppy called the devil too long. It's time to rise up because you see, God wants us to rule and reign in this life. And the world really is looking for leaders, looking for leadership, looking for people to rise up. That's why people that start to spruik like Hitler, they can put out a thing and so people are looking for a leader that will lead them, even if they lead them in the wrong direction. But the church today, I believe, has got to become the leadership the government is upon our shoulders. And we've got to learn to rise up and lead. We can't wait for the government to tell us what to do and how to do it. We've got to be able to lead. And, and God wants the church, you and I, to rule and reign. And once I know that God wants me to rule and reign, then it's not a boast, it's not pride, it's not arrogance, it's not that. It's just the will of God for my life. It's the will of God for your life. He wants you to rule and reign in this life right now. Do you believe that today? So if we can grab hold of some of these things here and, and, and then live by it and start to speak it out when the enemy comes, because how many people know the enemy does come? He will come for sure. He will come to deceive. He will come to stop you. And the, you, usually when you get a great prophetic word, the next week can be hell. Because the enemy comes to steal. But if you know what God has for your life, well then you'll just believe what God says. See, man's greatest enemy is not the devil. It's the sin nature that resulted from the fall. The devil is, is, comes and, and he speaks to us and, and, he, and he says things, but it's our sin nature that wants to grab hold of many of the things that he says. I don't want to speak too much today about 
the fall or the, or the problems of life. I want to speak about the answer. Amen? I want to speak about the answer because Jesus is the answer. See, Tom was talking a little bit at communion about that we're a new creation. We're spirit people now. I, I, I know Neil before he got born again. A lot of people know Neil before he got born again. But when he got born again, something dynamic and powerful happened. And if I, and if I just look at the fall of man, then, and all I see is the fall, and I think, well, I'm living under the curse, and that's how I'm going to live, and, and I'll just live a defeated life all my life. But if I realize that something happened through the blood of Jesus Christ and through the death and burial and resurrection of, the, of our Savior, then I realize that something happened in my life that will allow me and cause me to rule and reign in life and not live under the curse. It says there in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, all things are passed away. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. <laughs> Look at that person beside you. They're new creations. They're a, they're a work in progress. There, there's something that's happening in their lives. We're, we're being changed. We're being transformed every day, day by day, day by day. From glory to glory, he's lifting us. Amen. I'm being changed into the image of God. I'm being changed. And, and, and the atmosphere of change, just like if you're growing something, it's got to have an atmosphere. And, and the atmosphere of change that's going to come around our lives is going to cause us to grow in the realm of the Spirit and grow spiritually so that we can rule and reign in Christ is the atmosphere of the Spirit. And as we worship and as we, as we come and as we allow it, I don't know about you, but, but you know, we just, we just get taken into another realm where you can start to cry out to God, Abba, Father, God, touch me, help me, change me. Oh, I open the door of my life. I, I want to be changed. I, I want to be renewed. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. All things, sin, etc., have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Now, now I have the ability to overcome the sin nature because I've been born again. I've been transformed. I've been renewed. There's, there's something dynamic that's happened in my life. I, 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 there's some things you just cannot understand fully. You, you can't really comprehend it. But, but something on the inside of you says, I, I, I'm not like I used to be. I'm changed. Amen. Nancy says, praise God for that. <laughs> I have the ability to overcome the sin nature by the power of Christ. We all know Acts 1.8. You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. He said to the early church, he said, don't you go anywhere. Don't you even leave Jerusalem. Don't you go anywhere until you've been endured with power from on high. If ever there's a day we need a fresh outpouring of the Holy Ghost, it's got to be the day that we're living in now. If ever there's a time that we need to, to get full of the Holy Ghost, it's got to be now. Amen. It's not a time to play church. It's time to be the church. It's not a game of charade. It's, we are the church. We are the people of God. When I'm talking about this person that, you know, that's a new creation, I'm talking about me. I'm talking about you. You are a brand new person. Old things have passed away. We've been born again, amen. Born to rule, born to reign, born to live with Christ. What an amazing thing. Jesus came to give you abundant life among many other promises. Just read Psalm 103 and... You know, read all the promises of God. Forget not all the benefits of God. John 10 says the thief comes not to, uh, does not come except to steal and to kill and destroy. But I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundant. Andrew Einstein wrote a song once, More Abundant Life. Remember that? We used to jump and dance and clap to that thing. More abundant life. And as we sang it, the more we sang it, the more abundant life we got. Amen. More abundant life God has given to us today. Hallelujah. I can't remember. That's all I can remember. That's pretty good for me. 
come that they might have right life. You really must know. You've got to know this. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Do you believe that? Well, what we must know that God is not looking for a way to condemn you or to hurt you. God is not looking for a way today for you to slip up so he can condemn you. God is not the one who condemns. Satan is the one who condemns. Amen? He wants to condemn you. God is not looking for a way to hurt you today. He's not looking for a way to punish you today. Even though you might have done something bad, even though you've done something wrong, God will not punish you. God will not do that to you. He's a good God. Do you believe that today? Amen. God goes, the devil goes around seeking whom he may devour. But remember our, our bit of a slogan here? That God, Jesus goes around seeking whom he may empower. How many people want to be empowered today? Come on, how many people really want to be empowered? Well, God is seeking to empower you. How, does, how do we get there? Well, how do I get wet under the shower? I've got to get under the spout where the glory's coming out. Amen. I can walk around in the shower room all day and not get wet. I can come to church and not really be affected. I, I, I went into the chook house the other day and I didn't become a rooster. Coming into the, into the, into the church, doesn't. It's, it's what you do. It's whether you get out of the spout, where the glory comes out, whether you, whether you open yourself up to the realm of the Spirit, whether you let the King of glory come in, or whether we just play church. There's a lot of, you know, yeah, I won't go there. Anymore. Romans 8, 2 says, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Amen. We've got to... Put these on your, on your mirror, on your fridge. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free. Hallelujah. You're looking at a free man today. Amen. You're looking at a free people today. We are free. I want to tell you, friends, you cannot shout and, and carry on in church like that if there's not a certain amount of freedom around your life. I walked into that prayer meeting today and I'll tell you what, it, it, there was freedom in that prayer meeting. The people were... Man, it was a phew. <laughs> As we're singing here today, there's a freedom, there's a liberty. Uh, you know, shh. you want to take off, you want to, want to just jump and shout and yell and, and just let the Spirit of God wash all over you. That's how we get the freedom. I'm free. Set me free from the law of sin and death. Not an excuse to sin. Don't be deceived or, or tempted by the enemy. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, it says, No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Everybody say faithful. God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation, with the temptation will also Make a way of escape, hallelujah. That you may be able to bear it or endure it. God is faithful. He will make a way. He, he, God wants you free. Most surely more than you want yourself free. Paid an amazing price. Don't let the devil or anyone else tell you anything different. You don't have to put up with it. You're free from the curse of sin and death. Amen. You're free. You're free. I'm a free person. I'm a free agent. Hallelujah. Freedom reigns in this house. Oh, my God. I, I just want to see you so free. Amen. Freedom in the spirit. Jesus, our example. I'm talking about the answer more than the problem. There is a problem out there, but Jesus is the answer. You know, if the problem's really not the problem, then the answer's not the answer. You're just looking for a natural answer. You won't get it. But Jesus is the answer for the world today. 
walked on this as he walked on this earth, he did miracles. Amen. His words and life caused others to believe in him. That's what I'm believing for today: is that the church will become so impacted and so empowered and so changed by the power of God that we will carry the the anointing, that we will carry the presence of God, that we will carry something of the Shekinah glory, that there will be something around our lives that will attract people to us. And if you go down to Joe Blow in the street and you talk about going to church, they snob you, they speak to you, like they look at you like as if you're a nut. There was a young girl that came to see Nancy when she was in hospital there. She was highly educated. She was, I don't forget what she, degree she had, but she came into the hospital there and she started talking and started sharing and started to say something there about life and that. And, and uh, we, we said, yes, we're Christians. Well, man, she shut up like a clam. Oh, there's Christians. See, the... <laughs> Christians should become the most attractive people on the planet. There's something there that attracts people to us. Remember the prophecy that I spoke about last week from Smith Wigglesworth? He said that hospitals would be emptied and that people would bring the sick to the church and they would be healed. And there would be a move of the Spirit of God. You see, that's what we've got to understand, that we've got to be so attractive, we've got to be so full of the power of God. We've got to be so changed from glory to glory that, that people will come to us. People will come and start to share with us and start to open their hearts to us and, because they see something in us. Do you believe that today? Jesus' life, life was a testament of the power of God, of the love of God, of the mercy of God. Father, change us. Amen. Come on, lift up your hands in this house for a moment. Father, change us. Help us to change. Help us to change, Jesus. Help us to grab hold of everything that you've made available to us. Help us to run towards you, Jesus, and change. We'll give you the praise of that. Amen. See, if you don't go after him, he can't come after you. He said, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my Father is in heaven. But if you deny me, I have to deny you. That's, that's God's law. That's how it works. Jesus, when he was on planet Earth, and you've got to understand his power and his authority, he not only walked on water, he controlled the weather. He totally controlled the weather. He rebuked the wind and the sea in Mark 4, verse 39. When Peter and John touched and healed a crippled man, he just didn't walk, but he went walking and leaping and praising God. Amen. It's not a matter of just getting healed. But this man got such a touch from God that he went walking and leaping and praising God. Amen. Oh, I want to see that. How many people want to see that? People getting saved and healed, and all of a sudden, instead of just getting up like mully grub, they go walking and leaping and praising God. And they go out into the highways and the byways, and people say, Hey, what's going on with you? He just said, I got born again. Hallelujah. I, I'm a new creation. I'm, people might look at you like a cow looks at a new gate. But I want to tell you, friends, the Spirit of God wants to get all over our lives, and something will, will, will just cause us to change. Walk from a cripple to walking and leaping and praising God. What an amazing thing. Oh, I love that. Amen. When Jesus fed the 5,000 with the five loaves and a couple of fish, they were all filled and had 12 baskets left over. Jesus, listen to this. This is news flash. Jesus invented the doggy bag. If you remember nothing else, that's what you'll remember. Jesus invented the doggy bag. Twelve basketfuls left over, amen? What an amazing thing. <laughs> John uh, 6, 12 to 13. What does that say, John? I, can't, I haven't got it written down here. You got that one? 
Oh, yeah, that's about the 12 basketfuls. That's good. Amen. Hallelujah. God's good, eh? <laughs> Are you guys out there? Or am I? God is the God of more than enough. Amen. He is not a withholder. He is a rewarder of those who, what? Diligently seek him. He is a God of the overflow, the exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ask or think God. Paul knew and understood what Jesus could do in 2 Timothy 1.12. He says, I know whom I believe and am persuaded <laughs> he is able, I'm saying this very, very slow, to keep that which I have committed to him until that day. In other words, what he was saying is, I believe Jesus will look after me. I, am pers I know whom I believe. I know him. I met him. I met him. I know him. I know him. Amen. I met him. I met him in many different places, but I've met him. I know him. I know the one that I believe in and am persuaded that he is able. I am persuaded. Friend, are you persuaded today? Are you persuaded today that God can look after you? Are you persuaded today that God's got your back? Or does fear rule and reign in your life? Are you persuaded today? I told that story many times about the, the prayer cloth that a woman had received at a meeting. And she was to, so terrified because she got it for her mother who was crippled in her feet. Bedridden. She was going to give it to her mother, but she was so terrified that she put it up on the mantel. And she left it there for three months. And after a while, she much really heard a message that said, Are you persuaded? <laughs> and she went and got that prayer cloth and she took it to her mother and she said, Mom, will you wrap this around your feet when you go to bed tonight? The next morning, the mother rang her up and said, Honey, come around to my house. She said, what for? She said, pick me up. She said, what, what do you mean? She said, we're going shopping. I am totally healed. See, see, you carry something that other people need. But are you persuaded? Can you trust him? Can you really trust Jesus to have your back? Can you really trust him to help you? Can you really trust him? I know who I believe in, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed to him until that day. Not proud, not arrogant, not, not self-centered or anything like that, just persuaded. I pray today, and, and I know that Paul said, I, I prayed that I could persuade you, persuade us to understand. Paul also understood that no situation, no person, no devil could overpower Almighty God. He knew that no situation, no person, no devil could overpower Almighty God. The devil may have attacked him. He got attacked a lot. But Paul's confidence and an attitude towards the problem was demonstrated by his words. Johnny put up Romans Acts, uh, sorry, Romans 8, Romans Acts. Hallelujah, Jesus. I might get it on my Bible. I was liking what reading there. What? Shall we say to these things? I am persuaded. <laughs> See, it's what you say to these things. 
What shall I say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Thirty-two, Johnny. I'm going to have to go over here. That's okay. I might have probably only gave Johnny that one. Hallelujah. I guess we can all, almost all recite these things. It's so much part of our Christian life. Here we go. What, shall, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us, or shall he, not, shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? I was sharing this a little bit before. The enemy will, won't he? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God who also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As, is, as it is written, for your sake we shall be killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. What, you, know, you know, sometimes we just read scriptures, but if we can get there, that, you know, we've got to be persuaded. We've got to be persuaded. These verses are so full, so full of the victory of Christ, so full. Every, every line would send Satan to the medicine cabinet for a valium. Who wants to send the enemy to the medicine cabinet? Amen. Oh, Kalaka Shakabundi. Knowing God has got your back and nothing can separate you from God's love. Amen. Father, it says here in Romans 1.16, it says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God to salvation. So he, so what's, what does that mean, Nancy? So, 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 or Zoe, Sozo, what does it mean? Who? Total preservation from, from, I've got to get closer. Yell at me like you do at home. <laughs> Total preservation from surrounding evil. I should have, sorry. Anyhow, Shakabundi. I'm going to have cold tongue tonight. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, but I am very, very fearful of Nancy. No, for, for, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. For in it, everybody say in it. In it. In it. In it, amen. Come on, in it. <laughs> Come on, yeah, in it. In it, amen. In it. Not in the jab, in it. <laughs> in it. Better have a quick look at what's in it. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed. Father, I ask you today in Jesus' name to help us as your people. Help us, Father, as your people to, to, to just understand and rise up with power, with authority, with victory. Lord, we want to rule and reign in this life above all the, 
onslaught of the enemy and everything that is thrown at the world today. Father, the church has to rise up. We, you, you, you need us to rise up, Father. And Lord, I, I just want to say to you today, Father, we want to open our vessels that you can fill us with the power of God, that you can fill us with the anointing, that you can fill us with the victory of the cross, that you can fill us with everything that you've done for us. Lord, for the joy that was set before us, we were heard today. For the joy that was set uh, before you, you endured the cross. You didn't endure it just so you'd have a bunch of people running around uh, with bumper stickers on the back of their car. You, you want to raise up your church with power, with authority, with victory, with the anointing that will go out and cast out devils. Your word declares, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They will lay hands on the sick. They'll cast our devils that they are, oh, all these great things, my God. And so, Father, we want to be that people, and we're asking you right now, by your Spirit, that you'd, that you'd come again and meet with us and, and just wash over us, and we'll give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. And amen. Let's just stand to our feet this morning. just want to pray for some people here that today that suffer with eye strain, eye strain, and there's also somebody here this morning, and you've got a condition in your uh, left side, right about here, right in that area there. Love to pray for you. It's come and we'll minister to you today.